Hello and welcome to Modelling This Adventures. And in this video, I'm back on the radio control boat. Now, last time I sealed the outside of the hull with sanding sealer and painted the inside with three coats of varnish. And the prop shaft is now glued in. Now, in this video, I'm going to have to turn my attention to trying to make this look a little bit more like a Chris Craft Corvette rather than an Aeronaut Victoria. Now here's a picture of a real Chris Craft Corvette and you can see it's got a white hull and a wooden superstructure and a white roof. And if we look at a model of a Chris Craft Corvette, you can see here, uh, same thing, white hull, wooden superstructure, white roof. Now if you compare the appearance of this model boat that I've got to the Chris Craft Corvette, you can see that it is actually pretty similar. They've both got the basic design of a cabin cruiser, but there are some notable differences, which I'm gonna to have to try and incorporate into my model. So first of all, if you look at the front windows, these are much taller and bigger than they are on the Chris Craft Craft Corvette and I like the narrow slim, uh, slim sleek look of these windows here. Also on the Chris Craft Corvette the cabin comes a little bit farther forward here than it does on the Victoria. Now uh, we've also got the windows down the side they're fairly similar but the window at the back here is a bit lower on the Victoria than it is on the Corvette and this uh, windscreen in front of the uh, upper cabin is a bit shorter and lower than it is on the Victoria. We've also got some other bits and pieces. Uh, there are some portholes in the side of the hull on the Corvette. You can see that these are an oval shape and there are some differences in the fittings. So if I'm going to convert this into this, it's going to require a little bit of plastic surgery. And uh, I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't actually ruin the boat in the process, but I'm just going to see what I can actually achieve. Now, if you look at this picture here of the two side by side, this is going to just help me uh, with some of the dimensions and measurements. Um, I can superimpose the Corvette on top of the Aeronaut and you can again see some of these features highlighted. The upper windscreen is a bit farther forward, the uh, front windscreens are a bit farther forward and lower, um, but much of the general shape and outline is about the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some little portholes in the side of this hole here. Now I've 3D printed these uh, design these on Tinkercad and uh, printed them out and I've also printed out this little template here so that I can mark them on the hull in the same place on both sides I'm gonna drill these out now So I think these look really nice and if you look at the picture of the real thing I think they've come out pretty well. Now the next part of this modification is going to be to put some additional strips down the side of the hull because you can see the Chris Craft Corvette had these uh, just beneath the portholes and then another one lower down at the back. So I've cut a couple of strips of balsa wood from a sheet and I'm gonna gonna glue those on the side. Just fastening this on with super glue. That's the strips on. Now they look a bit rough and ready, but they'll be a lot better when they've been sanded to the right shape. These are looking very nice. 
Well, this is finally ready for its first coat of paint. Got the hole sanded, sealed, the strips put on, portholes drilled. I've masked the back plate here, the transom, and uh, I've just blocked off the prop shaft and the rubber tube with a couple of screws. So this is now going to have its first coat and I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Rust Flat White Primer. Here we go. That's a couple of coats of primer, sanding in between. Gonna leave it overnight to dry. Now I've given this two coats of primer and I'm not happy with the finish. I can still see a lot of uh, grain lines on here. Um, so I'm gonna put another coat of sealer on it and see if I can get that smoothed out. So I've made a really thick mix of dope and talcum powder. I'm hoping that's gonna fill all the gaps. Oh dear, oh dear, it's back to the drawing board on this. It looks as though that paint cannot withstand this dope. Oh dear, what an absolute mess. The beautiful painted hull of the Chris Craft Corvette. So no guesses for what's going on here. The whole lot's come off and I'm sanding it right back. Disaster. So I'm sanding this back with a hundred grit sandpaper. It's actually coming up pretty well. Got a much smoother finish than I had before. See, I've taken all the paint off the, the bottom. So I'm just gonna keep going until all the loose paint has come off. And then I think we'll be back to a, a better finish. Now, while I'm on with this, I thought I'd just show you this. Uh, this actually is a, a 3D printed stand that's designed for radio control aeroplanes. But it's actually been fantastic for building this boat. You can see it's adjustable. Uh, so you can hold planes with it, boats. Um, it's been really good for uh, sanding this model holding it the right way up, upside down. Highly recommend this if you've got a 3D printer. Um, and uh, here's a link to it. You can find it on Thingiverse. So a complete change of plan. This time I'm gonna have a go with uh, filler primer. So that's a finish after the first coat of filler primer. Now I know it looks very sort of mottled and rough, but it has got rid of all of the grain lines. So when that's sanded, I'm hoping it's gonna be much smoother than it was before. Well, this is looking pretty good after the filler primer has been sanded down. I know it looks like an old knackered boat, but it is a lot smoother. And uh, I'm just gonna go and put another coat of filler primer on now. Right, back to the white primer. So this is looking a lot better after the two coats of primer. Just gonna give it a very light sand in uh, 800 grit sandpaper. And then uh, this is gonna be my final white coat, satin blossom white. Well, I've got the white coat on and Pretty happy with how this is looking now. So uh, next stage, I'm gonna mask off the side of the boat and paint the bottom red. So I've got all this masked up and I'm gonna use a little trick here that I uh, read about on the internet to stop the red paint bleeding under this tape line here. And that's to, for the first coat, spray it with the white again. And then any white paint will bleed under there and seal it. And then when you put the red one on, hopefully there'll be no uh, bleeding. So the next coat is going to be Rust-Oleum Gloss Apple Red. Well, here we are. It's coming on, isn't it? Um, so that's the red bottom and the, uh, the sides. Not totally happy with the finish on the bottom, but uh, that's the way it is. Uh, so next up, I am going to spray it with Gloss Clear Coat. Going to put a few coats of this on 
um, and then try and make it look really nice. Beautiful evening for spraying and that clear coat's gone on very nice. Well, this is it after the first coat of clear coat and for some reason, you can see the underlying structure. I've got no idea why that's happened, but I'm just gonna put another coat on. Well, this is it after several coats of clear coat and it's looking pretty nice. Uh, doesn't look too bad, but you can see the finish on the red isn't that good. I'm not really very good at painting. You can see it's got orange peel on it. So uh, to try and improve this, I'm gonna wet sand it. Uh, I'm gonna start with 1200 grit sandpaper, go through 2000, 4000, 6000, 8000 and 10,000 and see if I can get that to look a bit smoother than that. You can see the difference between the two sides here. So that's been sanded in 1200 grit. That's the original. So it has made it a lot smoother, but you can see it's lost the uh, gloss shine. In for a penny, in for a pound. Might as well do the white while I'm at it. Right, now through the finer grades up to 10,000 grit. Well, it's starting to look better at last. Uh, the final stage, I'm going to go through these polishing compounds, coarse, fine and finish. And I'm hoping it's going to look good. Well, after a lot of work, I'm hoping that this is going to be the last step, the finish polishing compound. Well, that's it. And I reckon that's as good as I'm going to get it. Now to finish off this hole, I've got to do something with these portholes. So I'm thinking of uh, just putting some clear acetate in the back and then chroming up the front. Right, I'm going to try this liquid chrome pen on these portholes to see if that looks any good. Not happy with the finish on them. So I'm going to try chrome paint instead. All right, let's give this a go. I'm much happier with that. Now lastly, I'm just going to put this glazing in with a bit of glue and glaze. Well, am I glad to get to this stage? So after a lot of trial and tribulations, uh, I think the hole is finished and uh, it's not looking bad. Uh, and I think the portholes have come out all right. So there we are something looking a bit like the hull of a Chris Craft Corvette. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to start going on to the superstructure. Uh, but for now, I'll thank you for watching that ordeal. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on Modelling Misadventures.